Uh, greeting, Sister Cindy. How are you doing? I'm very, very good. And how are you today? Not too bad. Having a nice day, chilling out with family. Uh, yeah, it's cool. And so, could you introduce yourself and what you do? Okay, well, my name, as you know, is, is Tyne Kvetsu. I'm the founder of the Legality Organisation, and we're a Pan-African Human Rights Organisation that really focuses on telling the misrepresentation of African people in the media. And so, what are some of the things that we're dealing with at the moment that is highlighting presently? Well, I know there is lots of things, but... Would you like to mention a few? Actually, right now we're on, we're on a restructuring phase, but some of the projects we're dealing with is actually looking into healing our community. So really, rather than focusing on things that just looking to be a certain identity, it's also looking into things that help address some of the problems that we're facing. So whether it's on a personal level, on a community level, um, we're dealing with things with the Ma'afa, sort of like raising awareness of the word and actually some of the, the impact of it, but also encouraging people to actually find out more about African history through Ma'afa. You know, so like a holistic approach to to healing. And so what practical things, what ideas are you coming out with? I mean like today for example you're in Centerprise and this is, is this one of the ways to kind of catch up with people? And to... This, this is, today is really about getting the family stronger again. I mean we tend to go around and go to a lot of events and engage in workshops that are quite heavy on the heart, heavy on the spirit and we, we, you know, we sometimes need to just relax and laugh and breathe and play games and be silly. So today is really like a month, it's a commitment, it's every week um, where we just come down, ha you know, have some tea or some juice and water and a little bit, break some bread and play games and just actually get to know each other and actually like each other again because a lot of times we see each other and we don't actually know much about each other. So this, this isn't, I wouldn't call this work, in fact it's quite the opposite of work. It probably, well it definitely will benefit our work but it isn't work. Well, I don't actually advertise this, so it's not really something that we promote that per se. It's a very word of mouth thing. I've told a few friends, a few school friends, family that I kind of get on with and I gel with. I mean, they can invite friends if they have the same vibe, but it's not an event. So, like, I mean, if you came here at three o'clock, you'd see me at a table reading my newspaper, and then someone pulls up a chair and we start talking. I mean, today we've got children that we've never met before in our life who have come down, we're playing cards, and it's really about just, you know, rebuilding that community and spirit. But it's it's not actually an event, so, uh, you know, you know, we're here between three and seven, but I wouldn't, I don't want people to come down thinking that, you know, they're going to get flyers and yes, an yes, agenda. Yes. It's much more relaxed. Yes. Much more. Um, the other question I was going to ask you is. Um, about uh, BIS Publications. Um, they're the publishers of Black Scientist Adventures. Okay. And I just wanted to know um, what you know about the company and what you know about the books themselves. Uh, quite a bit actually. I mean, over the years I've seen the books, sort of like being advocating in my, my children's schools, um, and I've been to a couple of the launches of some of the new publications and stuff. And uh, it, generally it's excellent. I mean, it's the. Uh, I think one of the things that's missing when people talk about you know role models, we need more role models. Um, is is well, what kind of role models? You know, and I think the government's got this program. I call it the role model program, where they kind of like go around looking for people who are successful, but don't actually really work in the interest of the community. And you know, I have problems with that. What BIS does is a bit more sophisticated than that. I'm not saying every single person inside BIS is someone I completely agree with, but what we can be assured is that they've actually come from a wide diversity of, of backgrounds, different time eras, and so what they do is you know, they, they present a more holistic picture. It's not something that's just designed just to prop up the British economy, which is what tends to happen here, you know, the, the Lewis Hamiltons or the, you know, the, um, what's that runner's name, Kenny Holmes. Yeah. It, it's, it's a bit more bigger than sports and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a, an essential resource. All their books are essential resources for not just schools, but parents, mm -hmm. so that the children can go through them. And they don't, not to be forced through them, but just to naturally go through them and actually learn more about their heritage and people who, you know, come from their family, what they have done. And so what have your children said about when they've been reading through the books? What are their comments? What, what people have they concentrated on, if you can remember? It's not, they don't focus on one particular individual because we don't, we, 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 we don't read the books like from, we've got different approach to learning in my house and we, we don't sort of like go through head to, you know, from the beginning to the end. We might read a page.
page and then go to another book and read a page of that. Okay. And then we've got an encyclopedia, so we might pick a topic in there. Okay. And it's a much more organic way of learning rather than trying to say, right, here's a book you've got to read. If it's a narrative book, like we've got a lot of African, you know, West African stories mm -hmm. and some Anansi stories, mm -hmm. then we'll read them obviously from, you know, from front to end. But all the other stories, all the other books, we tend to approach it in a much more organic method. So some people, you know, sometimes you tell them a story and they'll be interested in the, back, the background of that. Book. So the relationship is not just about reading the book, it's the fact that you've got good interaction between the parent and the child through the book. So is that what you're That's about? right. And so what happens is that they're reading a variety of books and they're recognising that they're, they're, you know, there's a lot of Africans in these books and they're normal like me and they do great things and these are the things I don't see I don't always hear about as much as at school, even though their schools are getting better in the sense that I'm a governor there. Yeah. Um, but like, um, yeah, it, it's one of those things that they kind of understand that they can come home, read some books, and find out what it means to be an African. And my children are very proud to be African. That's one thing they'll tell you to your face. So, do you know? Um, do you think that this publication is needed, or do you think there's already something out there, or do you think the books are unique in their? In their I think this is clearly needed, this publication. I think there should be more investment in this, though. I think that we don't... It's not pushed as hard enough as it should be. And I don't mean that by the publishers and the itself, but I mean from, from a community perspective. I think that all schools should have these as resources. I think outside of schools, parents should have these resources. And I think these are the kind of things... These are simple things that we can do, as giving, you know, buying them and giving them away as birthday presents, Kwanzaa presents, and kind of like just... Collecting a series, one of the things that are really good to do is collect series. It's not very difficult, but it, it kind of gives a message of consistency yeah. that something's growing, something's for us. Yeah, because I know that they just released it, Black Scientist Inventors 3. That's right. And they've also released Black Scientist Inventors for Women as well. And that's key, the one that's actually for women as well. I think that's to be commended. There is nothing else on the market. I mean, a lot of the stuff, and there's nothing specialism to this as well, a lot of the stuff that we, 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 we read here when we are looking for our history is always a, a, from an African-American perspective. So the publishers are African-Americans. And what's good about this is that it's based over here. So we're getting a mixture of people. I'm not saying there's no African-Americans inside the books, because of course they are. But I'm saying that the whole idea is that we're starting to mix and match and starting to you know, really recognise homegrown talent. And that's something that's important, not just from a publication and an economic business model, but just from something that you know we don't have to look outside. And I think this is the best place to do that. Thank you for your time. No problem. And thank you for actually you know, talking about this publication. And could you say your website? Yeah. Uh, www.ligali.org. L-I-G-A-L-I.org. Brilliant. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Take care. Peace.